Hey everybody, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to the first Creator Toolbox of the Vancouver release cycle. This is a show brought to you by the ServiceNow Developer Program, where we demo all the newest, latest, and greatest features for every developer's toolbox. My script says we are in the middle of the Vancouver release, but this is actually the first live stream of the release content. So be sure to check out our content calendar at devlink.sn slash Vancouver. Before we jump into all the exciting content, let's do some introductions because I see that we have a very special guest here on the show today. I'll kick things off. My name is Laura McManaman. I just celebrated my sixth anniversary at ServiceNow, which is very exciting. And I am a member of the developer advocate team alongside the next introduction, which will be Pranav. Hello, everyone. My name is Pranav Bhagat, and I'm a senior developer advocate also here at ServiceNow. I have close to around seven years of experience, and that's about me. Let's I'll pass it to Earl. Hi, everyone. I am Earl Duque. I am part of the developer advocacy team here also at ServiceNow. Uh, what has been with the company for about two years, but before that, I was a developer for a bunch of different companies, uh, mostly in higher education before I joined service now and i'll kick it over to jared hey good morning good afternoon everyone i'm jared munt i'm a product success manager here at service now uh, i've been at service now for about a year now but prior to that did eight years out in the community and uh, I, I love talking about integrations free and premium security products uh, and other things on the platform we are extremely excited to have you here thank you so much for joining jared Quick note, in the upper right-hand corner of the video, to make sure my fingies were in the right direction, that will be a clear indicator that this is Vancouver content. So if you're ever questioning what version that we are presenting on, check out for the graphics in the upper right-hand corner. And with that, I will pass our conversation off to Pranav to discuss all the latest and greatest things with the ServiceNow Vault. Take it away. Yeah, now I'll pass it back to Jared because he'll be taking... <laughs> You will be showing us all these new features. Sounds great. Uh, so ServiceNow Vault is not a particular product. It is a suite of products. Um, so starting in the Tokyo release, it, Vault was launched, and it had four products that were included with it. And that was uh, the platform encryption, the data anonymization, code signing, and secrets management enterprise. And since Tokyo, that routinely just had features uh, added to those and, and even have had additional whole products added to the suite. And so today in, in Vancouver, it is grown from four to six products. So since then uh, in Utah, the log export service, the Kafka compatible uh, log exporting um, was added. Uh, and also uh, now for Vancouver, we have oh also also uh, data discovery has been added into the data privacy, and the newest kit on the block is the zero trust access. So that'll be the demo that I finish with today. Um, that's the the new uh, again premium products. It's that is only available with the Vault Suite license. Um, uh, but as we go through a few of these demos today, I'll, I'll sprinkle in some of the core. Uh, products that have been added during at the at the same time as these uh, premium products. Also, just before you um, start, Jared, I wanted to uh, call out. We have a nice active chat going along. People excited about Vancouver and stuff like that. Uh, right now, the YouTube chat isn't coming through our streaming service right now. So usually, I will display people's comments on the screen for people to. Um, engage with so that if people have a question for Jared or for any of us, then we can answer them live. We'll still do that if you're in the chat. So hi chat. Um, hey, everybody saying hello over there. Um, unfortunately, I can't show it on the screen today, but usually we'll show that on the screen, but uh, we still see you. I just want to make sure everybody at home knows that we see you. Thank you. Yes. And if there's a, if there's any specific questions you think would be, would be valuable, please just uh, read those read those and jump out. Um, so yeah, to understand Vault, um, like I said, it came out in Tokyo, uh, had four products. Uh, some of these products are available as separate uh, premium licenses. They can be purchased separately, uh, depending on the needs of your organization. And some of them are only available as the, as the full suite. 
Um, so every time I talk about uh, Vault, I, I always go back to Tokyo because um, all Tokyo was was a big release for core features as well. Uh, if you if you've not yet played with data filtration um, or the protected tables plugins, um, I always throw those out because usually if you're interested in Vault and the security products, uh, those those are some other free plugins that can kind of help your your take your instant security to the next level. Um, and then depending on if you have uh, specialized needs. Tokyo also had the SMIME encrypted email plugin for inbound and outbound encrypted emails. And then also the SKIM clients, if you're doing uh, integrations with identity management systems, uh, those are all came in Tokyo as well. Uh, it, quick, uh, I'll get through the history lesson and then get to the demos, uh, but. Um, we always love a history lesson, no problem with that. <laughs> yeah, there's, all, there's always a lot of history, especially with everything changing. I mean, we're talking about Vancouver right now, which is what, four days or something like that into early yeah. availability. So everything's changing pretty rapidly paced. All right. Welcome to software, right? Yeah. And as little as we'd like to admit it, a lot of people, you know, saying and you know, N is difficult. So maybe people maybe aren't even yet on Tokyo. So covering Tokyo is never is never harmful there as well. Hopefully new toss stuff. Right. And, and to get a good feel for the vault suite, um, I, I'll throw out the, the safe harbor forward looking. I'm not promising anything for the future, but I will say that since Tokyo, every release um, and, and even some store releases in between the major releases have continued to grow uh, what you get with that vault license. So nice. um, it, the, the history lesson does kind of show the, the pattern of growth and, and, and just new features, not for both the, the, the free core platform, but also uh, the premium licensing. So um, past Tokyo into Utah, uh, the log export service um, was available. Um, that helps get you get things out of the um, out of the instance very efficiently near real time. Uh, if you've played around or, or done the data ingress side of things with the integration hub Stream Connect, uh, this is the uh, the other side of the coin. This helps you stream your logs uh, out of the system. Uh, this one is available as a separate SKU. There is a similar to Integration Hub Starter. Uh, there is a, a a free license for this, um, but with the Vault Suite, it does give you Log Export Service Enterprise, which is a unlimited data uh, option. I have a quick question, Jared. Is any of this testable on like a PDI or something like that, or they have to arrange a specific demo from their sales team to see this? So most of these features are available in a PDI. Log right. export service, however, is is not. Um, it has to be in a certain part of the data center to take advantage of those. Um, it's it's the same reason why, uh, and the same hardware actually behind the scenes that why you can't do uh, custom named instances oh, on your PDI. It's, it, it piggybacks on that same uh, network infrastructure. So uh, it, for example, if you, if you are in a, uh, if you're a partner with a vendor instance or a customer with a sub prod instance, uh, you will be able to evaluate log export though. Fantastic. Thank you. So quick shout out to the developer.servicenow.com repository of PDIs. PDIs being personal developer instances. Thank you, Earl. Um, the really exciting thing about that is that Vancouver instances are available. So check those out if you'd like to play around with any of the stuff that we're talking about today. And nice plug. <laughs> yeah, so under data privacy, uh, the, the Tokyo data anonymization has continued to grow into a data privacy suite where it uh, now has both an anonymization feature um, to anonymize both in production and sub-production certain records. Um, but the data discovery helps you configure your data classification rules and will help make sure that uh, you know which fields in which tables um, your sensitive data exists, and that can help you better manage that. And so the, the data discovery uh, is part of the Vault Suite, and that will help you. Uh, it comes with some pre-configured regex rules to 
help scan your tables. And um, if a, someone previously on your instance maybe created some data fields or stored some foundational data, uh, I don't know. Everyone always uses social security numbers, but any other <laughs> credit cards, any anything sensitive, perhaps in the CMDB where it shouldn't be, uh, the data discovery will help you find that. Um, yeah, you know. I, I, I used to work in higher ed and all of our higher eds always had hospitals attached to it. So everything became some form of PII at some point because like a name is fine, an email just can be fine, but combined with any other information always become PII. So half of our stuff that we were swearing about our health customers instantly became stuff that would have helped having more kind of these kind of plugins. So that's nice to see. And one thing I can add on is Jared, like out of the box, I think we are supporting four things. One is the email address, phone number, US phone numbers, social security number, and uh, credit card number. So that's out of the box supported. So, and we can also create custom reg X also in this. So that's an addition. Absolutely. Yeah, this, this data privacy tool works very similar to the virtual agent uh, sensitive data handler plugin where we have a, a, a number of rules out of box to show you how to configure it. But yeah, it's definitely extensible for all your, right? Like a healthcare organization might have uh, ID numbers that are in a very specific format. We want to be able to discover those. And, um, and when we're cloning, uh, that's one of the major use cases um, for this is, is that way we know when we're cloning, we want to uh, either obfuscate that data or we want to just prevent it from being cloned completely. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, since we're in, the, in the, the Utah portion of the history of lesson, there were some really cool features that came out um, outside of Alta as well in the core security platform. Uh, the time-based one-time password uh, for email and SMS is something that I personally have, have tried to build myself and hack around on in the past. Uh, so that's now a native feature um, that where uh, previously, if you wanted to do multi-factor on your instance, you had to convince your users to set up a, a Google Authenticator equivalent um, app on their phone. Um, but now we can do just straight uh, time-based one-time password to an email, uh, an email address, or a SMS number. So further reducing friction for your users, uh, letting you crank up security, but not really impacting your organization to do so. Um, also within the adaptive authentication, so what's, what's, uh, what I see less and less of is the IP address controls strictly reducing uh, or restricting which network IP ranges can access your instance. What I see more of is moving to adaptive authentication, letting uh, the more mobile and uh, CSM engagement managers and, and things like that. Um, we don't want to restrict it just to the, the company IP ranges. So adaptive authentication has existed since Quebec, but in Utah, we got an upgrade to it where we have a lot more granular rules and we can protect your REST APIs and your SOAP APIs. So, uh, and, and we can even take it, a, a we can even take that another notch and we can say uh, on your REST APIs, you can do get requests, but if you are not using OAuth to authenticate to this API, you can not do a delete action or a post action. So it's it's very granular. That's cool. That got that got kind of snuck in into Utah with, without a whole lot of fanfare. And so that's why I want to bring it up here uh, in a forum like this. Yeah, the, one of the cool things about our show is, is we're always, we have a really good developer audience. Um, anybody, well, developer and service now, what does that mean anymore? Um, anybody that does building, creating, uh, analysts start doing more stuff in building. Um, admins and stuff like that, but um, I know what is good about our shows is we try to connect it to what's important and stuff like that, and I know a lot of us are developers or were developers on the platform and stuff like that, but uh, a lot of things that Jared just described back from like what happened in Utah and um, leading into today, it's good for us to have because we often forget that a lot of our people 
that are using this as end users are uh, field service or people that are on the move. And so having all these e easier ways to get into your instances uh, and not have to jump through hurdles of security every time you need to fill out a ticket or um, answer a field service management request or something like that uh, helps because someone might be jumping IPs a lot, so they have to have a different kind of security. Someone might have the same IP on their um, um, on their thing, but they might be moving around or um, or like the idea of they don't have access to a VPN or they do have access to a VPN and how what complicates access at that point. So having the ability for your system administrators to, and designers to decide how they want your people to be able to access your instance just makes it better and more streamlined to standards across the industry. So that's good stuff that is happening and why secu security is very important. Everybody knows it. Um, it's just like right when you make it harder for your users, then security becomes your enemy. But security is still important. So having options and having different ways to do it is always better. That's that very well said. Very well said. And we'll definitely come back to that because that new feature, uh, zero trust access, we'll show, show that here in a couple of minutes. Uh, and, and we'll go right into what Earl was just talking about. Um, one last free thing in Utah, um, it, you may have noticed this isn't avail uh, available. Uh, this will be installed by default when you upgrade to Vancouver is the security center. Uh, this is a new built from the ground up uh, modular security center that's going to be phasing out the previous ISC instance security center. So similar name, but it's a, it's a different product uh, with a wider scope of what this is touching. So we won't go deep into that. We, uh, out on, we'll have a link in the notes to the Privacy and Security Academy out under the community YouTube channel. And that's, uh, there was a, I think we did a 40, 45 minute uh, academy specifically on this. So, uh, but the security center, it's, it's similar to the ISC where it gives you a score, gives you recommendations about what, uh, options you have to raise your score. Um, but also gives you the, the details. Here's how it's going to impact your users. If you flip all these switches and, and try and get the highest score. So, um, so that's new. Um, and, the thing I like about the the new security center is that it uh, is extensible through uh, instance scan rules. So you can build your own checks. You can um, you can make your own um, rules, and and that way it's kind of a desired state configuration where um, the admins can can make sure that nobody else who has permission to their instances is, is making things go the other direction. Um, so that's, yeah, there, here we are. We're, that catches us up through Utah. Um, so Vancouver, um, some uh, of the, the Vancouver has some really cool core features. Um, and it, these are available for everyone, um, regardless of your license level. Uh, so I'll shout out, and I, and I think there will be some other live coding happy hours and some other episodes going deeper into these, but I will I will shout them out in case you have not heard of them before. And that would be security attributes is the first one. Uh, this is a addition. Um, this bolts on to the ACLs and also to the data filtration rules. And security attributes are um, not about the records that you're looking at, but it's about the person accessing the records. So these give you some rules uh, and some script fields to uh, make determinations kind of like kind of like the adaptive authentication. Um, it's it's session based. Um, so uh, it doesn't know who current is. It doesn't know current dot manager and things like that, but it does know uh, the the session of the person who is accessing it and conditions on the records that that person should have access to. Um, and because it doesn't need to know about the current record, uh, these, when you build these things, they are cached and they are very fast. So, um, if you caught the platform Academy that was done earlier this year, uh, where we did a, a full hour deep diving into how ACLs work and the different parts of them and which are cached and which, which ones are evaluated on every single field, every single time, uh, uh, this, this new security attributes will play very nice and will help you get better 
better control um, over those records. That's but, cash money. Yeah. <laughs> I saw Lauren roll her eyes. So, but now we're adding in another layer of, of options to configure your ACLs, um, right? Back in the day before data filtration, before, before the security attributes, you had ACLs and you had before query business rules. Now we have data filtration on top of that. Now we have security attributes that can say, right, it makes it, it could make it even an, another layer more difficult to troubleshoot, right? Like if, a, if a, a, a salesperson, they say, I can access this report when I'm in the office, but I can't access it when I'm at home, right? That could be a little bit more trouble for the uh, system administrator to troubleshoot. So what we've released in, in Vancouver is a new tool called Access Analyzer. So instead of having to turn on debug security and wade through 90 levels of, of little icons and, and searching, uh, we have a, a page that is built specifically for that. You put in uh, which user or group or role um, and which table or even which particular field on which table, and it will give you the history. Here's, here's which uh, data filtration rules. Here's which before query business rules may be impacting that. Here's the different layers of ACLs. Here's what, you know, here's why they can or cannot access this. And so I believe that's a, I can do a shout out to an upcoming live coding happy hour um, that's going to go deeper onto that particular Ooh. tool. But <laughs> that is, that's probably the, the, I don't know if that's for me, if that's cooler than security attributes, but I think uh, for a segment of the audience, that's going to save them a ton of time. Nice. Um, I, I also, I feel like we have to do this one because it is our first episode of the season. But um, it, in, Jared just referenced Live Coding Happy Hour. Right now you are watching Creator Toolbox, um, just FYI. We have a couple of shows, or we have a few shows actually at this point that we run on this YouTube channel and on podcasts. Uh, but we have different shows. Jerry just referenced Live Coding Happy Hour. It's another show that happens on this channel. So you're watching this on YouTube, on the Developer Program YouTube channel. And at this point, you can go to the upcoming live streams section of our channel homepage. And you'll see that we have mostly two shows lined up for this coming season um, on YouTube specifically. And one of them is Culture Creator Toolbox, which you're watching now. Hi. Uh, this one is demos and talking about product features. Um, usually partnered with a product manager. And the other show that Jared's talking about is Live Coding Happy Hour, which is a little bit more relaxed. And we try to go more into just straight trying to figure out how to get something to work and seeing all the pitfalls and just live demos, but not really demos because we it's usually unscripted and we're just trying to dive in so that everybody kind of sees the same experience that you might see when you start diving into it too. And then since we usually have a lot of developer advocates or MVPs or um, product managers sitting with us, you hit the oh, wall, you might hit at home, an expert right away being a fun little different kind of show as opposed to um, learning about the feature, then we try to dive into the feature. That's our one-two punch for these two shows. Maybe. So that's what Jared is referencing. Jared's a veteran of our shows, so live coding happy hours in his blood. I um, that's one that was the first show that I showed up on when I was a developer three companies ago. So <laughs> it was like a lot of us have our starts on, and a lot of community building around live coding happy hour is near near and dear to our hearts. So as much as we're in Creator Toolbox right now. A uh, little advertisement for to join us for Live Coding Happy Hour because we're a little bit more relaxed. We're more interactive um, with the, the audience and it's just a good time. Yeah, and it's a good time to plug into the Live Coding Happy Hour that will happen this Friday on Access Analyzer that, that Jared is talking about. So you can come and see uh, me play around with Access Analyzer in, morning, in India morning time. So yeah, that's there. Oh, Earl, you bring back good memories. Uh, I'll, I'll never forget how how intimidated and and sweaty I was after doing my first uh, live coding out to I don't know if there was fifty people watching it, but yeah, it felt. <laughs> it's it, it's not a um 
it's not a relief season if there's not one episode of at least a couple of us like just ending the show super sweaty <laughs> and anxious. They're like, what did it, what just happened? <laughs> it's usually me. But <laughs> Same. So good. Yes, yes. Looking forward to Access Analyzer and also seeing what how the the the, the community uh, feedback from that is and and. and if you if you reach out to me with any of that, uh, I'll make sure to get that right in the hands of the product management. Um, but also, I, this is the point where I usually uh, shout out to the idea portal out there on the support instance. If you if you have a tool, if you want new features to it, um, the product managers do monitor the idea portal. So, so I'm I'm caught up on history. That's what's in the core. Um, part of Vancouver, but we have the premium part of Vancouver, these vault licensed features. Uh, Vancouver has added on a couple of, of really fun options for us. Um, the, the first one um, is part of the column level encryption enterprise, which is, uh, you may have also heard it called as platform encryption. Uh, that's a bundle with the cloud, cloud encryption and column level encryption enterprise. That's where this lives. Um, previously, um, this, this, um, was a lot of, of key management framework records with their related lists. And you had to go to three different places. Um, you'd have the, the cryptographic module, the module access policy and an encrypted field configuration. And you had to kind of switch back and forth to see who had access to what, um, but now in Vancouver, um, I've upgraded my Blimey instance over uh, to Vancouver, <laughs> and I have some, and I have some, uh, a couple of different demo um, for within the column level encryption space. And so, as you can tell, this this menu here uh, is not very friendly unless you've been looking at it for a couple of years. Um, but brand new in Vancouver, we have this new view access policies. Uh, so again, I'm on the cryptographic module. Here's my encryption key down here, AES-256. We can drill down into that. Uh, there's some other key management things over here, uh, resource exchange. And this isn't a this isn't a training for column level encryption, but the, the brand new feature in Vancouver is this view access policies page. And so we take this web of related lists and we're turning it into something that that an auditor could look at, that a, a sysadmin could look at without having to invest um, an afternoon in, in drawing things back up. So here what we can see is on my, uh, my sample system property lockdown, uh, I was doing an experiment with in um, uh, secrets management and protecting system properties that had a type of password too. But that can be a that can be a, a demo for a different video. Um, but here we can see that by default uh, we are rejecting people. Great. Um, we don't have any logic in here that would allow a flow or a scheduled job running as system to get access to that. Um, and then we can add in a rule and tweak it as necessary. So that's that was something that was easy to misconfigure in the past. Uh, as we go down, we see which roles have access. We can see, oh, I'm giving ITIL admin um, access to this. Um, I'm not allowing impersonation. And over here under, under scope, um, looks like by default, I'm not, I'm not allowing global or anyone to, to do this. And I don't believe I have any script type policies. Um, that's another feature of uh, what you get with column level enterprise as opposed to the out of box, the standard column level um, is the ability to go beyond just giving access to things via a role. You can say this scope can access things or this script defines. Uh, and then the best part is this lower section here. Great, uh, great, this ITIL admin has access to, to this encryption policy. What does that actually mean? Oh, is that is that one user or is that you know accidentally giving 3,500 users access to this data? So here we can see for this particular uh, cryptographic policy that I clicked into, 
my demo user of Vinny ITIL is the only person <laughs> that can access this particular thing. So prior to Vancouver, this would have been me clicking around through uh, three different records and, and looking at the record and their related lists. But now I get to see this all on one page. Jared speaks so nicely about how about a lot of these things. Oh, and are we giving access to accidentally to hundreds of users? <laughs> it's like a, we've all been there. <laughs> Jared's saying it really, really nicely, but most of us that have ever done security has stumbled upon, oh, a lot more people have this role than I expected it. <laughs> or right. You grant a role and then it's like, hmm, why did my instance stop working? Huh. Yeah. Or nestled to like nestled roles. Like, oh, I gave this person just one role. You're like, yeah, but that role had all these others inside of it. <laughs> right. Especially ambiguous, like uh, product management things, right? Mm -hmm. Like within uh, agile, right? Things that sound like there might only be three people, uh, you know, somebody's troubleshooting ACLs and they give it to everyone temporarily. And then that, you know, eight months later, everyone still temporarily has that role. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit by design, too, because, I mean, there's a situation, oh, I granted this access of person to Scrum tasks, which granted them access to Agile development, which granted them access to project management, which instantly granted access to other ITIL stuff. And now they're also approval users somehow. Yeah. It's just like, well, it's a platform and we want it to be connected in those ways. But now, but we also want to make sure the security processes are pretty transparent and clear. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'll shout out. No, not, not. Yeah. Back to, back to vault. Uh, one thing I did not mention before um, is some of these are available as separate, separate SKUs as separate products to license. Uh, for example, the pro the platform encryption is available separately. Um, now in Vancouver, uh, the secrets management enterprise is available to purchase separately. Uh, so one of the, uh, the, a not new in Vancouver feature, but uh, one of the critical differences between secrets management core, which is installed on your instance already, wh whether you knew it or not. Um, and, and the secrets management core is protecting uh, is what handles the encryption for your password two fields. Um, those are, those are, so much more protected now than, than they were 10 years ago. Uh, and uh, Secrets Management Enterprise gives you the option for to, to do ITOM discovery into highly sensitive parts of your network where ServiceNow doesn't even know what the username and password, uh, or rather what the, what the password is to get access to those systems. Uh, so you can encrypt that on your mid server and your discovery process would be transparent, uh, it, identical to discovering all of your other systems. But um, for those key critical network subnets, um, ServiceNow does not have the, the key. Uh, it's a, a little bit like a little mini version of edge encryption for that. And so um, that, that can be now l l uh, purchased separately without having to purchase the whole Vault suite, uh, code signing and data privacy. While we're on this topic, um, are um, only available with the Vault suite. Uh, log export service can be purchased uh, outside of the Vault suite, and Zero Trust, which is where I'm going to right now, um, is in Vancouver only available as part of the Vault suite. So. Any deeper than that, uh, please talk to your account representative. But that's that's the high level what I know about the licensing. So and no need to go any deeper on that because this is all about the cool features. So that's a good point to clarify. Um, so because sometimes we get questions in the chat or in the comments following these presentations, uh, none of us are at liberty really to go deep into licensing or cost of any of these fun features. That is why y'all have lovely sales uh, associates and solution consultants to chat you up about that. So just starting that off <laughs> from the beginning. <laughs> so early. It's, so, um, I, does our docs have zoom ins on those links on everything that you're hovering over? They, they really? do. I don't know if, I don't know when that started, but when, 
in this table, when I hover over images or the, the text, and it's actually selectable text. Um, it's super extra, but I'm kind of digging it. Me too. I'm like, is that a, I thought that was a browser extension. I didn't know that was part of our doc site. No, I've, I used to do that, right, with the Mac trackpad and just pinch and zoom and, you know, kind of fly into a portion of a site. But no, that's that's just a, our standard docs site. Uh, Cute. <laughs> Maybe they maybe they need to share what they've been doing for the Vancouver release themselves. Because usually we have to ask people, including our own selves, to zoom in on our browser, but we haven't even had to ask you to do that. So shout out to the docs team, I guess. <laughs> exactly. So zero trust. Um, I mentioned this a bit earlier. Uh, Earl mentioned it. We want to make it easy for people to do their jobs. We don't want to add a lot of friction. Uh, but we, but we want to stay secure. So um, specifically zero trust access, this is a premium product that uh, works with the core adaptive authentication product. And so what we could do before, what, what everyone can do um, with your core license is um, we can detect and we can deny access to both interactive sessions and now rest soap and, um, your API access um, based off of IP ranges, uh, based off of devices. Um, so for example, the in, in Tokyo, the trusted mobile device came out where if you're on a trusted segment, you can register your device and then you can take that device into um, parts, segment, network segments on the planet to where they are um, they might not meet your other network approval ranges, but uh, because your device is already trusted, um, that device can still be used to interact with your ServiceNow instance. Um, same things, uh, certain roles and groups. Maybe you, you say if you are a security admin, you can only log in from the corporate IP range. But if you are a requester or a regular fulfiller, you can uh, log in from anywhere else, right? That 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 straight up or down uh, rules are available through uh, the adaptive authentication. But now, in Vancouver, with your Vault Suite, you get zero trust access. And over here in the red, this is the the bit that is really cool. So if you are, we can we can set this up. Um, it's into really any any flexible combination that will meet your security guidelines. So um, the example I usually go with is a somebody that um, is, maybe there's a, a sales manager. They have access to all the, all the sales data. They have access to a bunch of sensitive things, but they're traveling. So we want to, we want to still let them log into the instance and be a requester. We want to still give them catalog access if they need to request a new uh, laptop battery, if they need to re request any any amount of things that are in your employee service center catalog. Um, but we might not want to let them have those extra roles um, if they are traveling um, or, you know, whether it's outside of the, the corporate office or uh, onto the other side of the globe. So this lets you do granular and it will reduce access. Um, another thing would be with a sysadmin, right? If a sysadmin is taking a, a vacation, um, we would want them to still be able to log in and uh, maybe they're working remotely and we want them to log in and be able to have their ITIL role, but not the admin and security admin roles. So with zero trust access, we can selectively prune their roles at, uh, at login time. What I love about this too, is that I think it reflects a lot of, I think it shows ServiceNow's dedication to responding to the market, right? Like with COVID, like you see a lot of people now are more like adapting to more of like a digital nomad style of working, even if it's just home and office versus which was exclusively office before. And so with that change comes hesitancies from administration, from like the networking side. And so I, I love tools like this. I, I obviously like 
you know, <laughs> I feel like security is like the unsung hero of all tech because it's never the people, the ones that are like on the front lines, like, yes, yeah, security. But it's setting these things up from the get go that propel everything else to like such a higher degree of like confidence in this software. So I just really wanted to shout how much like I personally appreciate how reflexive of that trend like this is like, that's so cool. Hey, Jared, can I ask you a question too? Um, regarding, uh, you just said a comment, um, pruning the roles if they are show up maybe in a location you're not expecting, um, but they, you want to still let them get into their mm -hmm. ITIL stuff instead of their admin stuff. You said prune, and that to me feels very, um, not destructive is not a, the word I'm looking for, but is it, does it restore access if they get back into the normal looking thing? So it's not really pruning, it's just like a temporary, it's really just a, a temporary reduction instead of- Correct. Uh, yeah, it's not actually- We don't know you, get out of here. Yeah, yeah, it's not remo It's not changing your sys user record at all. It's not removing roles, it's not removing groups. It's it's just at, at the runtime when it, right? You, it, everyone knows you add, if I give Earl a new role, you have to log out and log back in for that because we have to. You have to have that role at at authentication time. At uh, so this this runs at that same that same early layer, and uh, when it's building your session, uh, you know that GS has role thing into the cache. Um, it's it's just dropping a couple um, behind the scenes right before it builds you all your your session information. Um, Very nice. And and Lauren is spot on. Yeah, it's it's the security that adapting to the market, uh, and our other uh, integrations and partners um, are are doing the same thing. They keep adding on new features. So, for example, down here at the bottom left, we have identity provider attributes. Your your single sign on IDPs. Um, they are they've made a lot of uh, improvements over the last couple of years as well. Right, especially with the work from home revolution and uh, needing to track what's going on. So, uh, in 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 my demo, we actually are looking at an identity provider attribute. So at login time, uh, the, the demo is using Okta, but but I'm not I'm not singling out Okta there. The, <laughs> the industry is moving um, to be more granular and and more intelligent. So um, what we'll see is. Uh, if, if the IDP attribute, um, if they say your risk is over a certain threshold, um, remove the roles. Otherwise, right, it, it, it doesn't, the example I'll have is it doesn't, we're not looking at network subnets or, you know, we're not looking at country codes. We're just looking at what is the, what does Okta think the risk is? And, and Okta, you know, that's a, that's a separate demo. And, and what do we have uh, available to us on that side? But we did we did get a question from um, the audience, and we'll make sure to say ask it live on air so people watching after the fact can hear it. But someone asked if a admin goes to a disallowed geolocation and gets that temporary access uh, or that reduced access. I mean, not temporary, um, and they go back to a regular geolocation. Will it cause a re-authentication uh, re for them, or will it be? I'd, I'd, well, I guess it's based on login, so yeah, they would need to. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it would detect um, and and prompt a, a, a re login. I think you would just have to to know um, to log out and log back in. Yeah. So Jared, like I think what I heard was like it's a session based login. So if they are in a geolocation which doesn't let them access the platform as an admin, then uh, once they're back to the location which which lets them access with admin role then i think uh, they will be able to do it they just have to log out and log in back it's a session based thing but to this question like what about vpns jared like what will happen if somebody is using vpn i think it it would be the de depending on the rules uh if you yeah if you're if we're if we have the network based rules and if you meet all the meet all the checks, uh, whether it's a corporate VPN or whether someone is purchasing a private VPN to you know log in from Germany and you're really in Canada, uh, 
yeah, it all is going to come back, come down to your, your source network address and, and the device that you're logging in from. Um, gotcha. So this, yeah, uh, this, this is, uh, we continue to get granular, right? We talked earlier about IP address control and it was just a strict up or down, you know, for all interactive users, all, um, a, all REST and SOAP and all your APIs, you know, are you in the coming from a network proper network range or not an up or down now with adaptive authentication, it's, we can be more granular with roles and groups and devices. And then zero trust lets us get even more surgical and we can prune particular roles. Ooh, surgical, uh, so, a good, good adjective there. <laughs> it's, uh, so the, one of the great things about being in the security space is that um, when we demo, it's largely configuration based because once everything is set up, the demo is largely transparent, right? If we're encrypting fields for our financial services operations tool, the, the whole point of, of having a secure system that's low friction is that it's it's they don't even, the end users don't even detect that we are doing full disk encryption, that we're doing zero trust access, that we're doing data privacy and sub right? It's just our, so a lot of our vault demos out there in the world look a lot like a CSM demo or look like a ITSM demo because really we're just making those other workflows work more secure. And it, in, in many cases, you can't even tell that the, these, free and premium security products are in place. So um, I can walk through what configuration options we have with Zero Trust, but um, but again, the Zero Trust demo looks a lot like just having a regular user at login.do logging into the instance, but because so much of that is just obfuscated behind the scenes. Thanks. So I'll, I'll flip into one of our quick uh, on Rails demo um, here. So like many of our security products, we must be uh, elevated to security admin. And then we'll go into our zero trust access uh, configuration. And I have one rule here where we are removing ITIL outside of the trusted network. And inside of this policy, I have two conditions. One is, uh, and this is, these are, you can look at these as ORs. So kind of similar to a, uh, when you're putting in roles on an ACL, right? Do you have ITIL? Do you have ITIL admin? You don't, you, these are not ANDs, these are ORs. Um, but for example, uh, if, if I'm on a, if trusted network is equal to false, this rule will kick in. Um, but also, like we mentioned earlier with the IDP attributes, um, if my, the IDP that I'm logging in with is this particular Okta one and the attribute returned during that, that uh, SAML handshake uh, redirection, uh, there's some attributes in that JSON. If the risk score is greater than 80, then also this will evaluate to true and the rule will kick in. So. And because these are all just controlled by records as well, you could probably tie like flows to them and have things be like notified and things like that, correct? Ooh, I like. I like where you're going with this. I have not. I'm like a not... plug flow designer. I'm just being the <laughs> execution side of things. True. Well, I, um, I guess I have a similar question. Um, when a person gets the reduced access, uh, are they notified of the reduced reduced access as they log in? Mm -hmm. That is a great question. Let's let's click through to the next couple of options. Uh, Segway. Yeah. yeah. So we will log out as our admin user and I will again just quickly log in here and we 
are notified with, with our info banner at the top of the screen. So um, I, I have not dived into the behind the scenes and, and I, I can't quote on how, how customizable this is and, and what your options are, but yes, out of box, Earl, when, when someone does meet a policy, um, notice that it doesn't, we're not giving, we're not, uh, like with a lot of security products, we're not specifically telling them, oh, you logged in from here. You need yeah. to log in from here to get no. full access, right? Because, because yeah, like, hey, you didn't, you, you broke the rule. Here's the exact security rule. <laughs> yeah. Right. So so we're intentionally, we're intentionally vague, but we are letting them know something is different for this session. Um, Just so they don't if, get the bug. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if they do want to dive deeper, um, we do provide this correlation ID at the top of the screen to... Like for example, if it's if it's not working quite right, or if if you're setting this up for the first time and you're trying to fine tune it, uh, this will be very helpful for you uh, for those things behind the scenes. So, awesome. uh, so the the final click through here is I'm logged in. I will have access to my uh, to my catalog, my portal, all the things. But um, remember, I do not have uh, ITIL. Any, anymore. So when I try and go and click in to something that does require that, I get the the same thing that a uh, a regular requester would get if they happen to know the exact URL of of where they're going. So uh, I'll I'll be in this example. I'm I'm logged in as me. So if I have all my bookmarks and I'm trying to deep link into a particular workspace or a particular record, we will get the the proper access to nine messages. And so that's, that right. is the, uh, the happy <laughs> path of, of configuring this, this new product. I think, again, we get so lost into how long we've been in the platform or anything, but I just think about, imagine not being able to do this stuff or having to do this stuff manually <laughs> like the the necessary guardrails and fences and coding that you would have to put to just be able to base things off of uh, what what it what a trusted network is more than that like geolocation all the things that goes into that but um now we have a a simpler a simple interface a lower code solution for admins to be able to set that up pretty quickly and to adjust on the fly which is even better too. Um, cause what if it's like, oh, the eight, that score of 80 on the, uh, Samuel handoff was a little too aggressive. Maybe we need to tone it down a little bit. <laughs> like, thinking about yeah. before all the, what was necessary to change a number from 80 to 79 in terms of trusted networks and geolocation and IP addresses and where everybody is and stuff like that. And then the roles that go down and up based off of that thing, like, I that's why I'm happy to be in the ServiceNow ecosystem because it's like why would I want to waste my time on that stuff? Yeah. So I can, let me focus on the fun stuff, inter interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah, and and so this this product, um, you think back to the last five years, ten years for some of us. Um, it's it's not just production, right? There's there's been times where we want to uh, we could we could use this same product in a sub prod to to limit, maybe we're doing a special something in dev and we only want to let two people have admin, right? So we could just configure a rule that says if you're not person A or B, strip admin at login, right? And then once you're done with your special dev or whatever you're, whatever you're researching, you open it back up for everyone. So um, yeah, it's just another, another tool where we're doing uh, configuration rules and, and being less reliant on scripting and, and those behind the scenes uh, engine blocks. And I can say one thing like uh, when I sh when we showed this particular feature during the episode of Tech Now, so some of the developer reached out to me. They said they built similar kind of a configuration and it took them, I think, two months or two and a half months to even reach half of what we are currently offering. So kudos to the engineering team who put effort in that. It's, yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, there. And what is, what is this page we're looking at? Oh, this. Uh, yeah, I was I was done with the demo, so I just put the, on uh, my default uh, advertising page. We're we're trying to spin up the platform privacy and security. Uh, it's it's I think under a, two months old. Um, it's it's a subsection out under the community, under now platform. Uh, privacy platform and security. And so that's where we will be posting things like the pl uh, privacy and security um, academy sessions that I mentioned earlier. Oh, actually, here's the one I mentioned earlier, uh, the security center one. Uh, so we're, we're posting those out here. Uh, some of the other PMs, uh, Randier, who's doing some great things with authentication. Uh, here's looks like uh, REST API auth scopes. That's the API side of adaptive authentication. So here, here's uh, a little how-to on if you want to force everyone to use OAuth and get rid of basic auth in your org, um, we can do that with these REST API authentication scopes. Um, so yeah, this is our, uh, our little part of the community. So I'm done, I'm done sharing. Um, <laughs> Well, thank you so much. I'm done. <laughs> I'm out. And we're done. Um, no, Jared, thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, I'm so amazed by everything that we got to see. I'm very excited to see like the trend of how the security product has started and grown throughout Tokyo, Utah, and now Vancouver. So this kind of brings us to the end of our first ever Creator Toolbox for Vancouver. A quick reminder to the crowd that we have an entire week full of content. We have a Breakpoint episode coming out tomorrow. We have a blog coming out on Thursday. And we end the week with not only a live coding happy hour, but also a replay of the Tech Now if you happen to miss it last Friday. Um, if you'd like to follow up with Jared on any more Vault-related things, do you have any... I don't know what that is. Um, do you happen to have any links that you'd like to plug to the crowd today? I, I'm going to just try and uh, get that privacy, uh, that platform privacy and security section out on community. Uh, that's that's where I'm going to. I think that would be the the top one. Any place that they can reach out to you if they have any additional questions? Sure, uh, I'm at ServiceNow, uh, so Jared M at ServiceNow.com or Jared.Munt at ServiceNow.com or uh, also out on Twitter and at the SN Devs uh, chat or LinkedIn. Do you have a short alias for your ServiceNow email address? I do. I do. Whoa, that. look at this celebrity status over here. <laughs> Very nice. Um, that all the stuff you can see remember you can go to devlink.sn uh you'll if you want a quick visualization scroll all go to that link scroll all the way down and you'll see a calendar that has all of that stuff on it it looks like this on your screen um it has all of our shows coming up and yeah easy visualization thank you lauren for creating that um cool anybody else have any other announcements they want to plug in pranav any final words no, I think I'm good. Just join us for the Access Analyzer Live Coding Happy Hour that's happening this Friday at 2 p.m. IST. So, yeah, that's about the last plug. IST. IST. <laughs> he says IST. 2 p.m. IST. Make sure you look up that, what that means for your time zone. Because <laughs> um, just like we did er earlier this year for our Utah release, uh, the times really um, surprised some people. So make sure you take a look at that um, if you want to tune in live. Otherwise, feel just like all of our shows, um, we get a lot of views after the fact when people start looking up topics. So hi to everybody watching <laughs> afterwards. And with that being said, thank you all for joining us. And we'll catch you all on Friday on our next live stream. Have an awesome day. Bye. Bye.
estás? Yeah, thanks, Bob.